Hi everyone. In this video, I will show you how to work with Markdown and LaTeX in Google Colab by working through a few math problems. Markdown is a plain text formatting syntax that converts easily to HTML. Various sites use Markdown. For example, if you look at a README on GitHub, there's a very good chance it's written in Markdown. Slack, Trello, and Discord are some other sites where you can use Markdown. LaTeX is a documentation preparation system for high quality typesetting. If you've ever read an academic paper, there's a very good chance that it was written using LaTeX. LaTeX is great for writing out equations, fractions, and mathematical formulas. I use LaTeX for my homework or when I need to write a paper. Let's get started. So in this example, I have three math problems that I'm going to work through. The first is from College Algebra by Sheldon Axler, and the other two are from Calculus by James Stewart. Let's get started with the first problem. So it states, find a number t such that the line containing the points 1, t, and 3, 7 have a slope of, set of 5. All right, so let's get started on answering this. Right now I'm clicked on the first text cell. And to start another, I can go in the top left corner and just hit text and it'll create a new markdown. I usually like to have some space between the question and my answer. So I'm going to put in some line breaks using markdown. The way that I do this is I use the less than sign, br forward slash greater sign. I'm just going to copy this, paste it, and we can see that this has made some space. Great. Next, I want to let the reader know that this is the answer. So the first thing I want to do is I want to put a heading. So the hashtag will make whatever I write out here heading, or it'll make the font a lot larger. And then next, I also want to center the text. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to have the less than sign, center, greater than sign. Then I'm going to type in the text that I want to put in. I just want to type in answer. And then I'm going to close this out with the less than sign, center, forward slash, greater than sign. Okay. So we can see that it's centered and just to make this stick out a bit more, I'm also going to bold this in Markdown. And the way that we do that is we put in two asterisks at the front and two asterisks, asterisks at the end. And we have this right cell that preview, so we don't have to hit shift enter to see it. So we can see that it's bolded. Great, so I denoted in this cell that this is the answer. And let's get started on working through the problem. So we know the formula to solve for a slope is rise over run. So I'll mention that in this answer here. So I'll put, if I put two hashtags where we have the heading here, two hashtags are a subheading. And then if you put a third one, that'll be a sub subheading, but we'll keep it at a subheading here. Okay. And at this point, this is where we get into LaTeX. So rise over run, that is going to be a fraction. And the way that we start typing LaTeX in Google Colab is we do it in between two dollar signs. And that's how you initiate it. And in this example, I am going to show how to make a fraction. So this is where it starts, the dollar sign, and the dollar sign is where it ends. And I am going to do a, make a fraction right now. So the way that I do this is I do a backslash F-R-A-C for frac, and then I'm going to do two curly braces. The first curly brace is the numerator, and the bottom curly brace is the denominator. So for this, it's 
y, and then, so we have y2 minus y1 for the numerator. So we'll do y sub 2, and the way that we do sub is we do this little line here, this underline here, and then 2 minus y underline 1. And we can see it being filled out here on the right hand side. Great. Then I have to do the same thing at the bottom for the x's, for the x points. So x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay. And then finally, I'm going to say that rise over run, this y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is equal to the slope. So equal to slope. Great. So the next thing is I'm going to put some space between these and I'm going to continue answering this. So the next thing we need to do is we need to say which of these corresponds to x1, x2, y1, y2. So the way that it's read is x is first and then y. So x1, y1, and then x2, y2. So I am going to write this out. Same thing as before, I'm going to put the two hashtags for the subheadings. And I am also going to put the T in LaTeX. So I'm going to do parentheses 1, comma, dollar sign, T, dollar sign. And this dollar sign is just using LaTeX for the T. Just because if you ever read a paper and you'll see variables, a lot of times they're denoted this way. So that's kind of the standard. Close the parentheses corresponds to that I am going to invoke LaTeX again so dollar sign x sub 1 so 1 corresponds to x sub x sub 1 and then y1 corresponds to t y sub 1 with this underline mark here okay let's close that out and again, you can see this being typed out on the right hand side. And then we have three and seven, and those are x2 and x1. So let's type that out. So three comma seven, close paren. Then we have LaTeX again for to denote x2 and y2. So dollar sign x sub two y sub 2. Okay. Then I'll go down to another line. So now that we know that, we can set up the formula and we can plug these numbers into the equation for the slope up here. So let's do that. Let's set it up. And let's let the reader know that we're setting it up. So do the hashtags again. Right. Then from here, we can go to LaTeX. And we're going to write the equation out using LaTeX. So let's do that. And we're going to invoke the frac again, and it's in between the dollar signs as always. So this is going to be a longer one, so I'm just going to get the dollar signs in, and I am going to type in the rest right now. So I also like to put in brackets as well, just because if I have multiple equal signs, I sometimes get confused. So this is more of a stylistic preference, but anyway. So I have the fraction, numerator, and denominator in curly braces. And let's put that in. So 7 minus t in the numerator, then 3 minus 1 in the denominator. And we're given the slope as 5 up here. So that's equal to 5.
Okay. And then, as always, we can simplify. So it depends on how descriptive you want to get, but since I want to show everybody how to use LaTeX, I'll be super descriptive. So the first thing we could do is just simplify the numerator, the, sorry, the denominator by subtracting. So I am actually just going to copy and paste this and then change this to a two. Okay. All right, so seven minus t divided by two is equal to five. So one thing we could do is we can get rid of the two on this side by multiplying by two, which would mean that we multiply the five by two on that side, whoops. So we do equal to, and I'm going to put the brackets. Again, that's a stylistic choice by me, seven minus t is equal to 10. All right, we're almost there. So I'm going to put equals again. Then I'm going to do negative t is equal to 3. So we took the 7, subtracted it by 10, and we got 3. And we need to move this negative sign over, and then we have our answer. So let's do that. So t is equal to negative three. Okay, so we showed that we solved for it. I'll just put it in brackets again. Okay, now let's type out the answer just to make it very clear what it is. So I'm going to put it in bold. So I have the subheadings again, and I'm going to put the text in and make it bold. So do two asterisks at the front, two at the end. Okay, and we can see that it's typed out. So using the formula for the slope between two points, we find that t or y sub one is equal to negative three. Great, so we solved our first problem. And hopefully this shows that it can be relatively easy to work with Markdown. Uh, LaTeX does take a little bit more effort, but it's not too much harder in my opinion. And it's like anything, the more you practice, the easier it gets. All right, so we have our first answer. And again, what I like to do is I like to have a bit of space between these. This is a stylistic preference. So I'm gonna put the markdown line breaks in again. So I have some space between this question and this question. Okay, let's move on to the question from Calculus by James Stewart. So the question is, how would you remove the discontinuity of F? In other words, how would you define F2 in order to make F continuous at two? So you may notice from this problem here, if we plug in two, then two minus two is zero. And anytime you end up with a zero in the denominator, that makes it undefined. So there is a way to solve for that, and we need to figure that out for this question. So another way that we can insert a cell to answer this is we could do control M B, and that'll create a new cell. And when we do that, it automatically creates a coding cell. So we also have to convert this cell to markdown. So let's do control M M. Great, so we have our markdown cell now. All right, so like before, I am going to put in the line breaks, BR. And 
and then I am going to put the answer to denote it. Remember, one hashtag makes it a full heading, and multiple hashtags make it subheadings. So we're going to center it again by putting it in between the less than and equal sign, less than and greater than sign. Put the text in the middle. And then again, center. And this time we need to put the forward slash to finish it off. And like the previous one, I am also going to bold this. Great. So let's get started on this. So looking at this, it looks like we can factor out the trinomial. So I am going to write that down. So I'm going to do the two hashtags to make this a subheading. Okay. So after that, going to go to a new line, create another subheading, and I am going to work on factoring this out. So I am going to rewrite this, then I'm going to factor this. So we're going back to LaTeX. So we put the dollar sign, dollar sign, f of x is equal to, and we have another fraction. So again, the way that we call a fraction in LaTeX is we do a backslash frac frac, then two curly brackets, numerator, numerator is the first one, denominator is the last one, so x, and the way that we do square is with this caret, x squared minus x minus 2, and then in the denominator we have x minus 2. Great. So let's work on factoring this out. So we should be able to factor it out if we do x plus 1 and x minus 2, then we should be, that's how we can factor out the trinomial. trinomial. So then we have another fraction again. So let's type that out. Frac, curly braces, curly braces. And I'm going to put these in parentheses because we're factoring these out. So let's do x plus 1, x minus 2. And then again, in the denominator, we have x minus 2. Great. OK, so we have this factored out. And one thing you may notice is we have x minus 2 in the numerator and x minus 2 in the denominator. So since we have both of those, we can actually cancel those out. So I'm going to write that out. I'm going to create another subheading. And I'm going to, again, put the x, whenever you have a variable, try to put it in a in LaTeX form. So between the two dollar signs just because it's the standard. And we can actually put the two in there as well. So Okay. So what I am going to do is I'll go down one more. Then I'll just copy and paste this. So I'm going to show that this x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is equal to just x plus 1. OK. So then we can show that we plugged in the hole for this discontinuity by just plugging in 2 into x. So that, if you remember before, 2 was the big issue because that would create a 0 in the denominator. But if we plug in 2 now, we shouldn't get a 0. So let's write that out. So if we do the subheadings, 
plugging in two, we now get, and I am going to go back to LaTeX, so dollar sign F, and we're plugging in two, so parentheses two is equal to two plus one is equal to three. Then close it out with the dollar sign. Great. And we're done. Let's just make it very clear. Two. And what I'm going to do is I have the subheadings. I'm going to make this bold and I'm going to write out F is continuous at two. Okay, so we solved that one and got to use a bit more LaTeX. So showing off how to use the caret to raise that to the power. And that's one of the reasons why I really enjoy working with LaTeX. It's relatively easy once you have it down and it looks very pretty. All right, shift enter. And then let's move down to our final question. And the final one is evaluate the integral going from 1 to 3, where x squared plus 2x minus 4 dx. Okay, so let's do this. Like before, I am going to create a new cell with the hotkey, so control M B. Then I'm going to control this with, then I'm going to change this to a markdown with control M M. And we have a markdown. And like before, oh, I am going to put space in between this one actually while I'm at it. Like before, I'm going to put spaces in between the questions. Okay. All right, so we're evaluating it from one to three. So we have a definite integral here. Let me just, I'm just going to copy and paste this since we're used to doing this. Okay, and this time I'm going to show everyone how to work with uh, multi-line LaTeX. And the way that you work with multiple lines is you use two dollar signs to start it and two dollar signs to end it. So if I just put in a number just to show this, we'll have one, one, one. And the way that we break these apart into multiple lines is we'll use the backslash, 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 backslash. And Oh, sorry, need it at the top. And this is how you can have it centered and you can work with a multi-line one so you don't have to constantly start a new line and start new dollar signs. And this is a bit more efficient of a way to do it. Okay, so let's type this out. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to type in the int. So to have the integral symbol, it's backslash int, and then we're going from one to three. So we do underscore one, and then the caret to bring it to the three. Okay, great, so one to three. And I'm just going to rewrite this at this point. So parentheses, x caret squared, plus 2x minus 4 dx then is equal to and then to start a new line again it's two backslashes backslash backslash okay let's go to the next line and let's integrate this through so the way that we do this is add one here to the exponent and then we divide it by three for this one, it's going to x, you could just think of this as x to the one, 
So when we integrate, we add 1, so it's going to be x squared, and then it's divided by 2. And then when we do that, they'll cancel out this 2. Then finally, we have this 4. So the, we'll just put an x here, and then we'll have that first part done. Okay, let's go back down, and let's write this out. So frac x to the third divided by 3 plus x squared minus 4x. And then we'll have to evaluate the interval from 1 to 3. And the way that you do this is you put in a dash sign. So the way that I saw the best way to do this is we'll do backslash big and it goes from one all the way up to three and that's what we're going to evaluate great so we are getting there it's equal sign backslash backslash for a new line start again okay and then the way that we evaluate this interval is we have to first plug in everything, all the three, all the the three here, and we integrate, we go from the top, the upper limit, and then we subtract that by one. Sorry, we plug these, this number into all the variables here, then we subtract that term by what we plug the bottom, interval right here where we plug the ones here and then we'll subtract the two terms and I'll just show it because I might be confusing people at this point. Okay. So if we plug in three for the first part, so three raised to the three is 27, then that's divided by three, that'll be nine. Nine plus, then we have 3 squared, so that'll just be 9. Then we subtract, and we put in 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Great, so we have 9 plus 9 minus 12, and then we subtract that by what will be... So in this case, we'll actually have a fraction. So Let's do the parentheses, and then we'll do frac, for backslash, frac, then we have the curly braces. So if we just plug in 1, 1 to the third is 1, so we just have 1 over 3 in this case. All right. Then plugging 1 in to the x squared, we just have 1 we're adding and then finally we plug in 1 to the negative 4 and that's just negative 4 right, we're getting there two backslashes to start a new line All right, so let's simplify 9 plus 9 is 18 minus 12 is 6 so 6 and then if you work this out it should be 2 to the 2 thirds. So the way that we do this is 2, and then we have another fraction, frac 2 over 3. Great. So equal to backslash backslash new line. All right. So we have the 2. Multiple uh, two and two thirds right here. So what we could do is we can set we can turn this into have that as the de denominator as well. So we could actually subtract these. So if we do that, we'll have eighteen at the top and three eighteen at the numerator and three as a denominator. So let's do that. So we'll turn this to a fraction. And we're just transforming this so we can subtract it easily. 
So 18 over 3 minus, and then we have the 2 thirds, and you just, so since we have 2 here, it's 2 times 6, and then you add that to the numerator, so it'll be frac 8 over 3 is equal to, and then we can also bold in LaTeX, and the way that we bold with LaTeX instead of using Markdown is we do backslash bold symbol, and then we wrap that around. And in this case, if we do the math here, 18, oh, so I apologize, so I made a mistake. It should be, since this was negative, we're actually adding these, so we're going to add these together. Sorry about that. And then when we add them together, you add 18 plus 8, that's 26, so it'll just be 26 over 3, and that'll be our answer. So we have this bold symbol, so we initiate it by the backslash, bold symbol, curly braces. For the most part, when you're raising something or sorry not raising something when you have a function that you're going to use in LaTeX you're going to use these curly braces to put it in between there so this will bold it so we're going to do another fraction frac curly braces curly braces 26 over 3 okay and I did not put in the new line earlier so that that's our answer at the bottom and it's bolded so I really hope that this video was helpful. I'm planning on making a few more. I'll work with other mathematical functions and equations, so just to get some diversity. I also added in two sources. So this is from the Markdown's official site. It's a quick cheat sheet. It should contain most of the functions that you'll use. Same for LaTeX. This is the LaTeX official site and you can use that link and it will show you some quick functions that you can use. So thanks for watching, happy coding, feel free to subscribe or connect on any social media platforms, I hope this was help helpful.